So, Danny. Yeah. Jeff and I ran seven miles yesterday. What did you do? I fell in love <laughs> with myself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 38 of A Brew With You. I am one of your hosts, Blake Mickle, accompanied by Mr. Motor City, Danny Brahas. <laughs> Me. That's you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, it is time to visit 8 Mile, work on my freestyle skills, and become a Tigers fan. Ooh. Um, well, you think you're going to see Eminem? Uh, hopefully. Do you think he loves I think, Detroit still? I, I think that he and I would be very good friends. I, I, feel, think, I think you two yeah. would get along great. Yeah. I mean, I think um, he lives in L.A., but I bet you he has like a trailer park home like in Detroit. Not like he lives there, but he just right. has it. You know sure. I mean? Not a fan of the Tigers, though. <laughs> oh. Not a fan. Yeah. Well, we can work on that. I know that in one song, Rap God, he references Thor. So, I mean, and that's that's an, instant, that's, a, that's an instant in right there. Yeah. He's, he, he has a song called Superman, too. So you just got more connections. Oh, Boom. oh look at that. Connection. Solid. It's like the move is meant to be. Yes. And if you're hearing a third voice right now, we are accompanied by, for the third time... Third time. Pa- patron, Woo. trainer, but most importantly, really good friend, Jeff Stewart. Thank How are you? Doing? Thank welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. 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 I feel glorious. Yes. F- fantastical. You look glorious. You look like you like just uh, been, yeah, you've been running in uh, uh, the Sahara. I don't it's know. like I'm training for a real. half marathon or something. <laughs> right. That's weird. <laughs> you, are, right. you are a bronze god, sir. I know. Thank Which, you. Thank you. Being Mexican, that makes me kind of jealous because you're more tan yeah, than I am. Yeah, what's going on yeah. here? This it's is not right. <laughs> this is, I live and work in a basement, so I, I'm pretty right. much I'm, I'm confined to my caves. Maybe yeah. you should take up running. Right. Uh, that isn't that. I, I think it's time for me to. Okay. Yeah. If you haven't, seen, if you remember from the last episode, uh, we saw a little, little, little preview, a little taste of the the cave. That's Ooh. a small little cave of Danny's yes. uh, domain there, but Ooh. you can't reveal too much. You can't reveal all your secrets. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Definitely That's not. Right. Uh, they did get a taste of the cave, though, and me and my ability to travel back through time. That's yes. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we can do a lot of things on the brew with you, but the power of alcohol. There you go. <laughs> no, it feels good to be here, guys. I appreciate it again. This, this is, is your third, third time. time. Third time. Three time. Three time. Three time. Wrestling move. Remember Booker T. Five yeah. Time. I feel a little more comfortable. I know how to talk into the mic now. Sure. Yeah. So I tell you what, though. I tell helps. you, my stepmom when she actually watched the show uh, when I first started the first several episodes, she said like Jeff, Jeff guy. I like Jeff. A nice. Lot. He, he was yeah. in, he was interesting. I like Jeff. Well, hopefully you'll see more of me in the future. Oh, you're gonna, you're actually, you're, you're gonna be, um, I, I'm gonna be like the Adam Carolla, and you're gonna be the Vinny Tortorich now, Love but it. like in a much lower level because Love those it. guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're awesome, but not like that yeah. awesome. They're here, we're just, just below, a, just it. A below. Just, yeah, just almost a there. Below. Yeah, almost I mean, there. they got a million views. We're not there yet, but we're yeah. gonna get a million. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> close, <laughs> close. Um, yeah, I, uh, you know, Jeff, I've mentioned a million times. He's been on the show two times before. You know, he's my uh, trainer for this half marathon I keep That's on right. referencing uh, on the show. And we have a special little game planned for later in the episode. We and do. Should uh, be fun. We've got some topics. So let us uh, continue with my rigmarole and then we can get the show on the road, huh? Let's get it started. For Go any ahead. of you joining us for the very first time, I brew with you is where Danny and I, and sometimes a guest, <laughs> will try a beer for the very first time. While discussing random topics broken up Tuesday through Thursday on YouTube, with the whole episode being released on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes on Friday. If you like what you hear, like what you see, like what you feel, go to patreon.com slash big deal Blake to get this whole episode a week early, along with other perks, plus exclusive episodes like the one I'm gonna be shooting this weekend. That's exciting. Nice. Very exciting. For a cost of a dollar, you get a whole episode. A A dollar? Just a dollar for a free episode. It's crazy. It's crazy. Right. Now I gotta bump my donation up from a quarter to a dollar just to see this. Yeah, yes. yeah the <laughs> just, system just works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this week we have a guest, so it's a little different. Yeah, sure. Um, normally, when the guest comes over, Danny and I provide the beer for a guest because you're our guest. But uh, Jeff has kind of a story. We'll get into why he started. But Jeff brought the beer or beers yep. today. Beers. But uh, always, beers. always the guest has honors where we're drinking. So, Jeff, where are we drinking today? Okay. Um, so, I didn't give it too much thought, except on the way over here, I heard on the radio a quick fun fact. Ooh. Yep. On this day in 1970, the Beatles had an album called Let It Be, and it was their last Let album as be, the four of them. Let okay. It be, and they had a song be, called The Long and Winding be, Road, okay. and it was the last song That's that they the had words. on the billboards as a number one hit. Ever. The Winding Road was their last Billboard number one hit. Yep. Okay. On this day in 1970. Oh, on this day. On this day. So it's, so not, it's you, can't, been, you can't drink on Abbey Road then because it's not the same album. I'm thinking of Liverpool. Ooh. Put me in England. England then. Jolly England. good. England. Cup of tea. 
Oi, oi. Sounds oi. like you're from England. <laughs> oh, I dare you time to fight sometimes, oi. So, in the honor of the Beatles, the Beatleys, let's uh, <laughs> yes, let's drink in Liverpool. So Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool on three, gentlemen. One, two, three, Liverpool. Liverpool. Lynn? <laughs> I went to. All right uh, then. I went to All England right. uh, in Ireland for a, a duo trip. I went to. That was like I went to primarily to Ireland, and then I went to London for a couple of days. So that, you know, you're right there, so you can try and sure. see as much as sightseeing sure. a week. And I actually went to Abbey Road and saw them sign. And for honor for my dad, because my dad's more, you know, the Stones Beatles rivalry. My dad's a Stones fan. So on Abbey nice. Road, I wrote Stones Rule. Oh, <laughs> nice. Because <laughs> you can like write on the graffiti yeah. wall there. You pissed someone off that day. I'm sure it did. Yeah. But, but, and they, they, I'm sure they just wipe it off. And yeah. they do Paul McCartney again. followed behind you with an magic yeah. eraser. <laughs> I'm afraid that's on my wall. I'm yeah. American. <laughs> I'm afraid they don't, Blake. <laughs> well, uh, Jeff, we kind of got a little story with the we beer do. situation. So, do you want me to take it away, or you got this? I can break it down. Break a it down. Bit. Break it down. Um, so, I was in Michigan last weekend. Yeah, um, interesting. I was because uh, <laughs> someone else is going to be in Michigan soon. Oh, oh Michigan yeah. doesn't know what's about to hit it. Yeah. yeah, we got some stories later. So, so I was along the coastline up in like the South Haven, Saugatuck area. I was up there for a couple of days, and I stopped by the Saugatuck Brewery up there. First time there. Um, I know they have a couple of beers that they sell down here, but first time actually at the brewery, and I got to see it. So, I thought it would be a really good idea to get a growler over here of um, their Starburst wheat for us to drink today. However. I got this about a week and a half ago, and it's probably not as fresh. So it, was a, it was a chance. And it was a chance that yeah. I took that I could maybe get on here sooner, but it just didn't work out with timing with me traveling and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of our side beer, and I just want to give a shout-out that Saga Talk was awesome. Yeah. Um, we tweeted at you guys, and they Did liked our tweets. Did you so. have any of the blueberry maple stout? Um, I did. I had a I had a little taster of it, and yeah. it was phenomenal. It was that really is good. There, one of my favorites from them because it literally just takes like I'm piling pancakes yeah. in my mouth. Ooh, yeah, I like pancakes. And, um, yeah. I, what I thought was really cool about the brewery, just real quick with it, um, on the side of the brewery, they actually have like six or seven tanks where just normal people, um, besides breweries, normal people, um, can actually come in and brew their own beer. Awesome. In their brewery, just based on whatever they want to bring with their recipes. That's stuff. awesome. So they allow you to use their equipment for free. Uh, that is so, so cool. Hey, Saga Tuck, we I rated you. Great. We did a, the three bonfire, was it? Bonfire Brown. Bonfire Brown. I was close. Yeah. yeah. That was close. You got oh, Bonfire, right? Yeah, I got the Bonfire. I remember because I remember the label and I'm a graphic designer and a visual learner. Um, <laughs> that was at the Timmy O'Toole's episode. You should go watch that. It was a very good yes. episode. We saw to- uh, Tony uh, Smith. Smith um, and uh, we continue to do this again. Just shout out to them. That was great. And we had the uh, Saga Took uh, Bonfire Brown there. Yep. And uh, this is, you had, you said good things about Saga Took. It was great. And the only, no disrespect to Saga Took. We just didn't, it was a risk because after a week and a half uh, and you have a growler, you're not sure it was it's going to be good because usually it's, uh, even when I have the brewery right by me, Forbidden Root, they say you should not go past a week if you get in a growler. Yeah. Um, so we just didn't want to get a risk Saga Took. Just respect, show them love. But what did you bring? So plan B. Plan B. Um, my goal this week for Mr. Blake here and Danny, but <laughs> I, I, I really want them to Big rate Blake. another four and a half beer. And I'm really hoping Ooh. that this is going to be the beer. So I, I'm, it's been I'm a while. confident on it. It's a quad. I'm going to present it right now. Sure. It's the three philosopher, three philosophers by Omer, Omer gang, Omer, Omer gang, gang. Omer okay. gang. Um, from Cooperstown, New York. And it's great a, brewery. Have you been there? Uh, I haven't been there, but oh, okay. They, I'll okay, okay. finish up and I, um, I will, I'll tell you guys some things about them that is awesome, that are awesome. So it's a quadruple ale. It's 98% De- ale and then it's got 2% with cherries and stuff like that, but it's a Belgian, it's a Belgian beer. You know, see, this is already like, I when know. D- d- Jeff is on the right path already because I know this is like my taste. This is my, this is my, my, my zone. Like I like all beer, mm-hmm. even stouts. I like, even I said, I gave four and a half to freaking KBS, but that should have been a five and I take that back. But this you're talking. This is up my alley in taste buds. So it, there's a good chance this could already be a guaranteed four. I'm not okay. saying anything. Okay. But this could be a good chance already. I'm, I'm liking the start so far. Yeah, you're off to, but I'm not promising anything though. The thing is, is that I know you like Belgians. This is oh, a, yeah. this is a um, the quadruple. Ooh. So it's going to be a little bit darker. Cool. It's, it's actually a little bit more maltier, and we'll taste it. But uh, it's also high in alcohol too. So just be careful. No, there's only four of them. So just be we're careful. Good. That's we're true. Good. Yeah, we're good. So why don't we, uh, <clears throat> Danny? Why don't you do some honors here? First? Sure. So and yeah, no, I I mean. This beer has, has been one of their flagships for quite some time since the brewery's been open, uh, if I'm not mistaken, because uh, I know that I've been in there for a while. Let's start passing those down. Okay. Yeah, here you go. Um, 
I we just not too long ago, and it, again because we referenced the O'Toole's episode, we were talking pour slow. You don't want to disturb the yeast sediment at the bottom. Um, this is a blended style beer, which is something you don't see super often, but Firestone Walker is kind of famous for it. Um, and it's, it's kind of something cool that you, again, you don't see it too often where they take just basically two different styles of beer, uh, cask and age them together and just see what, what create, what, what the end result creates. And, uh, I, uh, confession, I have had this before, uh, but not on the show, so it doesn't count, not on the show, but back in the day, uh, this was kind of like young Danny's, one of the very first craft beers that I fell in love with. And This is a first love for you. This is like yeah. a girlfriend from like like not freshman year but sophomore year. Right. That's like yeah. it, like you had some experience, and then it's like oh, this one was a, like this was yeah. like a three month relationship so, instead of a two week yeah, relationship. For, right, right. And, and this my just bar, got awkward. And, 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 no, not at all. That never happened. Uh, maybe it did. Who knows? <laughs> Stories for another time. Anyway, Stacy. Yeah. Her name is Stacy. Stacy. Stacy, I still miss you. Um, <laughs> I don't. Uh, I have known. That was a, a couple, metaphor, known, everyone. Right, this is not yeah. a real story. Yeah. It's a, it's I, a I, joke. I, I've known a couple of girls named Stacy, and one of them is probably going to be like, "Oh my god, I never knew." Was it Stacy's uh, mom? <laughs> yeah. uh, in the commercial Stacey's or in the video, yes, Rachel Hunter, Stacy's mom, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Forgot about that. But song. anyways, at my bar in the suburbs, we carried this in bottles, and for whatever reason. It just did not move. Nobody would buy it, probably because you know it was the suburbs, and, and people were like, ah, it's "I don't write it. It's expensive. Yeah. It's, I don't really. I'm, I want a safe beer to drink." So when it came straight down to it, and they were just trying to get rid of it, one of the like uh, GMs or the GM at the time was just like, I, "We were talking about it, and I was like, I don't understand why this beer doesn't move. I love this beer." And he's like, "Honestly, it's like when you get off of work, is like you can take." whatever the stock is left shut up and wow. uh they had I, they had like a case and a half and i was just like are you sure and he's like yeah he's like if we don't move it he's like that's Take it's yours wow. and Take i was just like okay yeah. <laughs> that's awesome man that was a that's a feast for you right there yeah. man that's a that's a win well let's try this because yeah. oh you're still pouring down i've had uh three philosophers once but it was the it's another one that they have and it's the corked one like the the 750 Okay. Um, the tall one. So I haven't had this one that's so, the quadruple. Right. The other cool thing about Omegang is they are, for fans of the show, uh, they have a deal with HBO uh, mm. and they brew... HBO, they, yeah. They brew specific beers. They have a Game of Thrones series of beers. Oh, which, this is the same brewery? This is the same brewery. Oh. And I went to the... Four and a half. I went to the release party for Fire and Blood Red Ale, which is a phenomenal beer. Unfortunately, they're limited release, so they the yeah. only one I've seen that they've brewed twice is their original, uh, a golden ale called the Seven Kingdoms, or oh, yeah. the Iron Throne, I'm sorry, is a, is a golden ale. Seven Kingdoms was the hoppy wheat that came out uh, in debut with this season. Hoppy but wheat, hoppy we, wheat, hoppy when we wheat. Went, when we went to the Rattler uh, for the release party, we had a guy walk up to us, and he's like, hey, do you guys mind if I sit down and eat with you guys because there was nowhere else to sit in the place? And we're like, yeah, absolutely. We made some jokes, uh, Game of Thrones related. Turns out he is the marketing director for Oma Gang. He was awesome. Uh, he just sat and hung out with us, talked about beer. Nice. And I attempted in my last bar company, unfortunately, they never went for it. I attempted and was in contact with him and one of the vendors trying to get the Game of Thrones series of beers to our bar. But unfortunately, the owners of my last place just weren't on board. Uh, uh, well, I was a lot of talking. So let's just drink okay. up, guys. Let's yeah. taste this up. I'm very, Cheers. very excited. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for no being the guest and still bringing the beer. We really appreciate it. Too Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just smelling this right now. I could smell a little bit of the cherry. Yeah, that's good. This is very good. It's just as I remember. That's awesome. You know what's really funny, Dan? This is two beers in a row. It kind of has this like a little bit of a carbonation, a little bit of a like it a does. like a, a pop to it. Yeah, um, not a lot. Like the last one, we had that uh, the, a, the Trader Joe's. What was it? Got pro, 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 pro. Uh, providential. Providential. Yeah. Isn't that kind of a typical for the Belgians or the quadruples to have a little more carbonation to it? Yeah, I think you're right. This is very good. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> ale on leaves again to circle back around to that uh, yeast sediment at the bottom of the bottle uh, is kind of great for bottle conditioning beers for, the, for them to travel because it allows for additional fermentation and out of that you do get uh, a little extra carbonation if I'm not mistaken hence a lot of your Belgian style beers are going to have that very kind of effervescent uh, air about them 
Mm. Um, I'm very interested. I mean, you definitely in, taste those cherries. Oh, that's that's like I said, it's not your typical Belgian. Yeah, I'm I'm it's I'm kind of, proud. This is I interesting. Know you like the light Belgian, so this is the quadruple. But yeah, this is, has a lot of cherries. I I taste a lot of vanilla. I don't know if you get those I, I'm definitely yeah. like you're hitting it right on the head. Like the biggest thing I'm noticing, the biggest thing, cherries, the sweetness factor, very the vanilla, sweet, very the, malty. Maybe maybe not a caramel, but a little bit of a. Um, it is caramel, like yeah, toffee. Yeah, there it is. Toffee. It, it, yeah, it, it, it's this other sweet yeah. blend I'm tasting right now. And it's, it's really dry. Look, that's the carbonation. Yeah. I think that's the, uh, the because of the uh, Belgium's factor. Um, interesting, though. But the, uh, if you uh, have to watch the whole episode at the very end, we rate all the beers we drink one through five stars. And you'll have to just wait to the very end of that to find out what we're going to give it and see if Jeffy's uh, wish hoping. comes true. I'm hoping. Yeah. Um. I don't know yet. We'll see. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. see. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you. When the whole beer is done, <coughs> like, you can take a sip and then make a rate. But I think I like trying the whole beer because that's what I think a big factor for me is when you drink the whole beer, are you satisfied? Do you want more? Is it like, I just was good with that Can one. you have another? All, yeah, exactly. I think there's a big right. factor to yeah. it. I mean, I'm just kind of like wine. It's got to open up a little bit too. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny. Yes. Let's fix some facts and air some airs because last episode you had to travel and back in time to do it. So right. let's do it. I'm not forgetting this time. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've mastered the speed force, uh, but tapping into it does does uh, spike my metabolism. So, uh, so I don't have to eat a million pizzas to regain those. Uh, this one's actually relatively quick. Last week... Again, I think because we were telling just a lot of personal stories about death, uh, near death experiences. Fun. It was fun. <laughs> um, near death. It was that was funny. The the only thing <laughs> that we really kind of skipped our beat on was uh, Ron Howard's Rush, and so I just kind of went through. I confirmed Rush was the movie starring Chris Hemsworth right. that was directed by Ron Howard. That's based off a true story. Uh, we had the Driven and Drive. Like thirty second long debate drive. Of course, the Ryan Gosling music. So we were movie. right on that. We were right on that. Just confirming. Right. Driven now. was the, uh, the, and I'm only bringing this up because it is the Sly Stallone movie that was. It was just a fic, uh, fictitious story about you know Formula One racer and some like Sly Stallone plays like some ex Formula One racer who's trying to help a, like an up and coming star. And I'm only bringing this up because when I was doing you know the Google search and all that stuff like making sure the titles were right. Uh, Driven got a 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> instantly, I was like, I need to that's see that higher movie. than I thought. <laughs> 14%? That's low. <laughs> Damn. And that's the only reason that I brought that up, because I saw that and just started I laughing. Remember. And I was just like, man, all right, I need to watch that movie, because it must just be oh, terrible. Oh, horrible. Damn. Yeah. Horrible. That's, that's, I mean... I'm trying to think of other. It's like movie. a Formula One racing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Isn't like Return of the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes like a zero percent? I think, like not Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, but like the sequel to it that you never existed. I didn't know there was a sequel. Yeah, I think I think there's a I think it's a zero wow. percent. There are movies that have zero percent. That Drive wasn't bad. Drive was awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, I never saw movie. Drive, but I heard good. it was. I heard it universally yeah. it was great, and I actually never saw Rush. And I heard Rush was another movie that well, Drive people watched. Rush was a movie that not, not too many people watched, but I heard it was good. Yeah. I heard a lot of people that was actually, the, people got respect for Chris Hemsworth on that because they're like, oh, he's just some pretty boy Thor guy. And he's like, no, he actually did a good job in that movie. I've never, I haven't seen, I've never seen Rush. That's just the talk of the town. And also the, I don't know his name. We can fix the facts on this. Thank you, Danny. Um, of course. <laughs> the antagonist in that movie. He's also the antagonist in Civil War. Same guy. Okay. Um, again, I'm a face guy, not a name guy. Sure. Um, but that's, I, I don't know his name, surprisingly enough. Okay. I don't either. All yeah. right. Sorry. That's all facts. Good. Yep. I uh, wait. So that was it. Just that. So just the two. That was it. That's not bad. That was that was it. You Every, guys are getting better. Yeah, we're getting <laughs> really better. You're so smart. Yeah. I just need this intern for time code. So yes. I still want an intern because I'm a, I will find a reason for a goddamn intern on this show. <laughs> Jeff was my intern. I feel like time, every time you say it, you want me over here. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> Maybe. Not alluding to just, anything. Just rubbing Fine. it in now. Talk to my agent. Um, uh -huh. It's $25 an hour, which is... That's not bad. It's pretty good for the going rate That's for, not an, bad at for all. Sure. an intern. It is an intern. Though. I worked... Oh, oh, you want to talk about crap? When I was in college... My, uh, this is one bullshit thing about my college. Uh, it's praised to be one of the best internship programs or co-op programs in the country. Because you have to get three internships before you graduate. You have to get... Huh? like You have to do three internships. So... You have to technically start like your summer of sophomore year, which I didn't because I didn't declare. So I actually had to do it the summer after my senior year. Gotcha. So I technically, I didn't graduate in May. I graduated in August because I had to do my internship to get my credits. Um, and I always thought it was bullshit because it's just like you have to do these internships, yep. but they don't help you. It's like you got to do three internships. So find a job. 
And if you don't get one, you don't get the credit for it. So it's not like you can just sign up for an internship somewhere, like through the school or anything. You have to find like a job that'll be an internship. And it's like, this is garbage. It's like, it's required. Yeah, you guys weird. are doing this because you're just requiring three yeah. instead of the standard one, but you're not doing anything about it. It's just like you're requiring. So it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. And also with on top of that, you say $25 an hour. Two. I should have said higher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two out of the three internships I did. No. One out of the four, I should say, paid me. Oh. The worst summer of my life, the worst summer of my life, and this could be a topic, is summer jobs. We're talking about this on the topic. <laughs> oh, man. Summer jobs. <laughs> um, but one of the worst summers of my life, I had to do two internships because I, I, what, how it is, I broke it up. I did two part-time, so it counted as one okay. for credit. And then neither of them paid. So I worked on the weekends at Brooks Brothers to get a retail job to get money. So gotcha. I worked seven days a week. It was awesome. I, I remember that. No, oh, thank you, I, Danny. I never that. saw anybody that summer. Yeah, it was like I, I came I home. Everyone's that. partying and having fun. Yeah. I'm like, I gotta work. Gotta work. That sucks. Oh, it was you didn't horrible. Even get paid. I didn't get paid. Nothing. Nothing. That's horrible. That's I had why one, I never did I had one woman. I worked for a woman who had her own company and she needed help. And like out of all these businesses I worked at, they didn't pay me. But the one woman who owned her own business, she paid me. And it was not much, but it was like, I'll take 500 bucks over nothing. Right. <laughs> you know and what I mean? And it's okay. So the point of an intern is that it helps you in your future to get like a, the next job. Did exactly. It, did it help you? Um, Was it worth to take those two non-paid jobs? Did it help you? Where you I will today? say this. I will say this. It did. It, I did get a great experience. Yeah. But I, don't, about, I don't think three, three was way too much. Well, for okay. How about this? So you worked retail. I think everyone in their life should work retail. Damn right. We've talked about that. Yep. So, yeah. so maybe not helping you out today, but maybe customer service down the line. Maybe when you shop, you appreciate it a little bit more. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, so it's like, like Danny that. with the waiting industry. It's just, I never, I didn't know I did work in the waiting industry. Just right. a, a very, yeah. a kind of like a skew it's, version of the it. The world would be a better if place everyone, if everybody <laughs> just spent it's one true. year working in restaurants. 100%. Just one. Just, one, just understand. That's yep. it. Did like, that, when you're did like, that. when you're at a young, impressionable age too, like when they're like 21, 22, if they spend one year working in it, the world would be a better place. That's 100%. Amazing. I I agree that my teacher um one of my mentors he says the same thing about improv like the world would be a better place if everyone just took one improv class, just one improv class to understand that you have to appreciate the person next to you on stage. You can't just sit like yep. no no no. It's it's a long it's a long philosophy, but I think a lot of people it's say that three philosophies actually. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Full circle. Rating not given yet. You have to wait to the end of the episode. Speaking of the end of the episode, let's move on to the second part. How about Ooh, that, gentlemen? Uh, yes. We got. Let's play the Already? game. You ready for the game, Jeff? Oh, I'm, are you guys ready? Oh. Oh. Ready for the game. Let's do it. All right, part two. Let's do this. 